Welcome back to yet another video from salesforcerm.com. In this video, we will see how to do Salesforce and deployments on Azure. We will use Azure Repo and Azure Pipelines for this recipe. As mentioned in the blog, the prerequisite is that you should have good hands-on with Salesforce migration tool, good understanding in GitHub and Azure Repos. You can sign up for a developer edition on Azure from this link. I have explained the same on my previous blog. With that, let's get started and take a look at the process by which the pipeline is designed to work. As you might be knowing, Azure Pipeline is in a virtual machine at runtime and we need to push the entire code from our repo to the virtual machine's local. For that, we have the first step to check out from the repo. The next step is to run the AND scripts based on the input variable. We have the retrieve, deploy or both options available to choose from. We will see more of this later in the video. The final step is to push the retrieve components or metadata back to the repo from the virtual machine's local. Let us move on and see the master file. The master file is nothing but the YAML file. This is the file with which we will build the pipeline or the ADO job. We will see the details about the file from the repo. You can clone this repo from the link given in the blog or also from the description. Let us take a look at the files now. This is my GitHub repo that you can clone to kickstart your ADO build. These are the files and folders in the repo. These files are nothing but the force.co migration tool with a little modification to the build files. In the folder my dev works, you can see the retrieve unpackage folder where the retrieve components will be placed. The unpackage folder will have the package.xml with which the retrieval will happen. In this example, I just have a custom object to retrieve. Let us go back and look at the build.properties files. In here you can see two set of credentials. This is the trick most folks will be using and is to avoid changing credentials between target and source every time. Let us see how this is related to build.xml. As you can see in the build.xml we have a retrieve target and deploy code target. For retrieve, we use the first set of credentials and for deploy code, we use the second set of credentials. Now let's take a look at the pipeline or the YAML file in detail. In here, we have the command trigger which is used to control when the pipeline should get fired. In our example, it's a manual run, so we have set it as none. The next command, pool, sets the kind of virtual agent that has to be used we can use Windows or Ubuntu agents. I chose Ubuntu for this recipe. Moving on, we have the various steps defined. The first step is to check out which is a standard task in ADO to copy the files from the repo to the virtual machines local. Confirming variables is to debug the variables used in the build. The next steps are to retrieve and deploy the metadata as per the build files from the migration tool. Here you can see the condition to run only if the build type is retrieve or both. Similarly, we have the deploy step to do the deployment and corresponding condition. The build file from which the target has to be driven is also added in the step. Taking back to the build file, you can see we have the targets retrieve and deploy code, which also has to be added to the corresponding steps in your YAML file. Also to make the build dynamic, we have the condition added to run as per the input while running the pipeline. You can watch this in action during the demo later in the video. The final step is to add the files back to the repo from the agents local. These are few git commands that you need to run in your YAML file to get things done. At this line git remote add origin you need to provide the repo URL. Make sure you replace the password from git generate credentials button instead of the first instance of the username in the repo URL. You can see how I have modified the URL as per my repo credentials in Azure. With this now let's take a look at the Azure pipeline in action. This is my Azure repo and let us see how the pipeline is set up. I have got the pipeline already set up but no worries, we will start a new one with the YAML file that we have. Click on the pipeline from the left sidebar and choose the new pipeline. Then you select the Azure repo gate, choose your repo on the next screen, select the existing Azure pipeline YAML file option as we have the YAML file ready. 
select the path to the YAML file. In this case, we have it in our root folder and copy it. Click on continue. You can review the YAML file here. Now we need to set up the variable that identifies whether we need to retrieve, deploy or both. Click on variables and again click on new variable. Give name as build type and value as retrieve which we are setting as default. Check. Let the user override the value when running the pipeline so that we can put deploy or both as well as variable value. Once done, choose OK at the bottom of the page and choose to save. From run drop down, choose to save again. You can see the name is auto generated. Let's rename it. Now let us run the pipeline. Choose variables. Let us keep it as default, which is retrieve. Click run, click on the job and from the next page, you can see all the steps being queued up and being run. This is the job page and you can see one job is being assigned. The agent is being already running and has been completed it says so it's basically like the agent has been assigned you can see the steps are being executed so this is the checkout step and the next step is confirming variables so you can see retrieve is the variable that we chose and the next step it's retrieving from source so it's really fast you can see the and steps are being executed so you can see in progress and succeeded with that id and this has been skipped because uh, we have a condition to skip it and push to repo because it's retrieve it pushed the changes to the repo since i don't have any changes with uh, my previous run there is nothing to commit because the xml files are the same the next step again is a standard task which is post job checkout and you can see the rest of the step to finalize the job and to create a build status now let's run it with a different approach like setting the build type as both which will do both the retrieve and deploy. Let's set the variable and just click on run. Click on the job to see the job details. So you can see again the agent is being assigned. Once the agent is assigned it will start the job. So the agent it's randomly assigned from the cloud and we have chosen Windows latest. So you can see the steps are being executed now. Checkout is completed confirming variables is complete and now the retrieval is in progress so you can see the retrieval is in progress with that retrieve id from salesforce it's being executed so we have one custom object to retrieve so that is complete right now as you can see here and now click on deploy to target org so you can see both the jobs got run because we choose both in the variable so you can see now it's getting deployed it's cute, very cute so if you go back uh, deploy to target talk step you can see deployment succeeded so this is the same and steps which you used to see when you were running it from your local and then we have the rest of the step like push to repo if there was a change again there is nothing to comment because there is no change from my previous build and rest of the steps the standard steps which uh, azure creates for you so that's it with the demo uh, we just ran two jobs one with retrieve and another with uh, deploy and retrieve both so these are the two jobs which we ran and from the pipelines you can see the different pipelines we have built so you can create uh, different pipelines in a combination to do the retrieve and deploy so thanks for watching this video if you have any questions do comment let me know your thoughts about this video